Hi, Dr. Patrick Gentempo here, and thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel. We have great content in store for you. I'm so excited to be here with you, and let's jump right into it. Well, what we're showing is that it's not actually the damage to the cells, it's damage to the extracellular matrix. Well, there is no safety protocols for looking at the extracellular matrix. In humans, even in FDA trials, we don't even do drug trials looking at extracellular matrix. What is the extracellular matrix? Imagine a house without a frame, you know? Now you got floppy drywall and some shingles up there. Right. You got nothing. And that's what a human cell structure, you know, 70 trillion cells are useless without the framework. But extracellular matrix is the framework, but it goes further than just scaffolding or strength or skeletal structure. It actually is the communication network. The extracellular matrix is under an electron scanning microscope looks like fiber optic cables. And they literally function this way. These gap junctions connect the cytoplasm or this highly protected inside of the cellular environment in one cell to that of another cell. So the intracellular environment of the cell, once there's an intact extracellular matrix, is body wide. Mm. My liver cell is connected to every other cell in the body through this extracellular matrix. You start to crush that and you start to isolate cells. You start to get loneliness at the cellular level, which has all kinds of interesting phenomena. But th to answer your question directly, not only did we not do the studies, the studies that were being submitted to the, by the drug companies or the chemical companies weren't the right ones. They, they were narrow in their they scope. They were narrow in their scope. They cherry picked the data, right? Oh, we, we have these cells we can show as no toxicity. So they cherry pick their data and say, see, it doesn't affect human biology. Right. So now uh, this is all in the marketplace. It's, it's put into farming practice. Monsanto literally has a patent on these seeds, right? And, uh, and now if you've got a farm that's using GMO crops and uh, adjacent to it is a farm that doesn't, uh, we can't contain uh, you know, the influence of these GMO crops, right? I mean, w when they go to seed, et cetera, can it spread around? And you know, how do you contain this? The genie's out of the bottle. I don't think anybody saw this coming. Yeah. The sociopolitical implications of having a patent on a seed is creepy. It, you can't patent a naturally occurring compound. You just can't do that. And so for all of human history, seeds were not patentable. Seeds were owned by the farmer. And so we did our own seed harvesting. There was these wonderful guys who had their whole business was just reclaiming seed for the farmer. And so they would take a portion of the corn crop or a portion of the soybean or a portion of the wheat crop and they would put it through seed cleaner machines and then return to the farmer bags and bags of seeds for their next year. And so 10% of their crop or so would be preserved as seed crop. And so they didn't sell 10% of their crop, they just turned that into their own seeds and would plant that the following year. That's all of human history. Right. And then suddenly the possibility of patenting a seed means that you can now own that seed, mm. i.e. the farmer doesn't own that intellectual property. And that was the, the trick that they used to really amp up their business plan. It's one thing to have a GMO corn, but how do you get farmers all the way across the country to pay a premium, pay more, for a genetically modified seed? Well, first you have to bake up some sort of marketing plan, so you create a story of like, well, this is here to create crop yield, increase the yield per acre. But I think your point earlier was critical, is the reason these things went into practice had nothing to do with crop yield. They were envisioned as an, a potential marketplace for chemical sales. That's why this whole story was created. And so at no point did Monsanto set out to say, we want to produce, create a higher crop yield. They wanted to sell more Roundup. And so then they created this whole study. They said, well, let's, let's do a short-term study to show higher crop yield per acre. Well, if you do that for one or two or three years, you can get a higher crop yield momentarily because you're stressing the crop. This is the interesting thing about any biology. Uh, we do this with our cattle. Uh, they grow fat, fatter faster if we stress them so we can take them to butcher quicker. So you're asserting then that it's not a foregone conclusion that, that GMOs increase crop yield. You're saying that, that, that that's a, um, you know, it goes through a honeymoon period, if you will, for a period of time where you see this increase in yield, but it's, a non, it's not a sustainable thing. This has already been published. And so seven years, 10 years into that crop, 
If you keep growing GMO on the same plot of land, seven to 10 years in, suddenly you're seeing a drop in yield. Wow, so that, that wow. and that is, you know, and you're saying this is published already, so this is, this is known uh, and, it, and it's yes. gone through peer review, et cetera. So this is something that, uh, you know, really is deflating to this whole concept out there that GMOs are the savior of the world, you know, uh, that the horrors of starvation are gonna be averted, right. et cetera. And, uh, and don't worry about all those conspiracy theorists who are saying, oh, you know, they're proven completely safe and all these people who are waving their arms around, you know, uh, leaky gut and all these other, you know, maladies that are emerging in humanity post the, you know, the GMO and, and Roundup era, that that stuff is all just, you know, these are crazy people talking. So, so now, and this is, <laughs> so we're looking now, this, so we've seen decades now since it's introduced, the farming practices, we're now seeing studies that are coming in saying that the yield is not sustainable, there's a period of increased yield, then it drops off, and now you're saying that the parent company of Monsanto, while we're watching all this happen, is looking to sell it off to Bayer. So what do you know about that? Well, I think even before we get to that point, it, you know, there's definitely many sociopolitical, geopolitical reasons for that sale, I think, to be going on. Mm -hmm. But I think that you know, the more striking thing for you know, looking at those late 90s, early 2000s is, you know, so they were trying to make an argument to the, to the farmer who was their consumer that they, this would improve crop yield. And in the back of the farmer's mind, they probably were thinking, because farmers are some of the smartest people I've ever hung out with, they know their plants. And they know that stressing a plant leads to this, this effort to pr produce more fruit because the plant thinks it's dying, so it's trying to get progeny out there. Mm -hmm. And so you will increase momentarily this yield, but then three years in, seven years into a, a stressed out plant, this is so predictable. I mean, in the end, this isn't even surprising. If we putting a chemical into the soil that's robbing it of micronutrients, macronutrients, and medicinal quality for that plant, and we keep doing that, the plant is gonna eventually go past the stress response of, okay, I'll make more fruit, to the, a continued stress response and running out of reservoir. Right. I'm stressed, but I can't respond. I can't get enough fruit out there, and I'm starting to really fail. And same thing in humans. Acute inflammation mm -hmm. is life-saving. It extends life. It makes you stronger, not weaker. Chronic inflammation destroys you. That's right. And so the plant moves from an acute inflammatory kind of reaction of like, I'm stressed, I'm in an environment that's not gonna sustain me well, I need to get progeny out there. Continue that injury, continue that injury, continue that injury and depletion, and then it goes into a chronic inflammatory state where the crop is seriously failing. Then you need to not only convince uh, the farmer through biology, because there's many of them that were holdouts that said, you know, look, I do not want some genetically modified weird seed that I can't own. Right. That puts me in too much dependence on you, Monsanto. I'm not doing that. I'm not taking that risk that, because I can see the writing on the wall. If I go GMO, I can't go back in time. I can't suddenly decide I'm gonna be organic the next year. And so if I go GMO, I am fully dependent on what you think you can charge for that seed. And you can just keep ratcheting it up and you'll keep it right under my profit margin so that I can survive, but I can never thrive. I'll never pay off my farm debt. I'll never pay off my t loans to the bank. Uh, you're going to keep me dependent. And so the farmers they I think, saw that. They become indentured servants at indentured that point servants. to Monsanto, not in control of their own destiny anymore. If you can't own your own seed as a farmer, you've lost freedom. You've lost any potential of really breaking, breaking some sort of cycle and becoming independent. So that's a deal with the devil if I've ever heard one, right? Deal with the devil, and so who would do that? Mm -hmm. Well, again, this subtle, insidious reality of a patent sneaks in. They patented a seed, and you mentioned it just briefly earlier, is that when a seed goes through its process of making a crop and it goes into pollination, it's sending the genetically modified information in its pollen out to seed the rest of the farm. But of course, pollen is not limited to the, the farm. Right. The wind doesn't stop at the border at the fence line. Right. And so you've got now GMO pollen. It's a freaky concept, right? Think about pollen. You wake up in the morning in, in Virginia where I live and your whole car is covered with pollen from the trees and everything else and your black car looks green. That tiny little powder that's going airborne and you're breathing it in and everything, is genetically modified. Oof. The GMO, the genetically modified data that's making that corn grow resistant to Roundup is now airborne and it's traveling across crops. 
And so it was easy. Monsanto just hired a bunch of lawyers to go field to field and start suing farmers for intellectual property stealing. They were suing them for stealing their IP because they simply did a genetic test on the corn that was growing on the crops next to one of the Monsanto farms and said, oh, farmer B, C, and D, you guys are all growing genetically modified crops and you didn't buy seed from us. We own a patent on that. And they're like, we didn't buy seed from you. That's right. We don't want, oh no, here's the genetic data. You have genetically modified crop growing in your thing. Were We're they successful in that enforcement? So successful that we went from just a few test plants in 1996, uh, test uh, fields, to by 10 years later, they owned 95% of the soybean industry and 85% of the corn industry. In 10 years, they took over the entire industry. So they get this straight as far as the, the theory of law. If somebody takes their intellectual property and irresponsibly forces it upon me, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, I don't want it. I don't want to accept it. I never asked for it. Yet I still have to pay. I mean, didn't they violate my rights to have my own seed and my own farm? Yet the courts. Every single court case, again and again and again, successful far- suit, successful suit after successful suit. Farmers were being sent into bankruptcy with these lawsuits. I was going to say because they probably couldn't even sustain the the legal fees. The legal be- onslaught was impossible. So they had to surrender, basically. Saying- they were selling their farm to pay for the legal fees. Thanks so much for being here and watching that video. And can I ask you to please subscribe to our channel so you can find out when we're posting new content. You'll be alerted right away when we do. To share this with people you think might benefit from the information, and certainly it helps us if you like the video. So if you like what you just saw, go ahead and hit that like button. And again, thank you so much for being here with me right now.